Hi, my name is Beth Stingline. I am the EL Supervisor for Bloomington Public Schools. I'd like to share with you some best practice strategies that Whitney Dieterman and Kit Lowen use when they co-teach in the first grade classroom at Indian Mounds for their English learners. EL students have challenges learning in the classroom because they are learning English at the same time that they're learning the academics. So they're learning to read and learning English at the same time. So they're like learning twice as much. One challenge is all of their academic language has to be learned at school. And that's true of a lot of our students. That's how they learn to read. That's how they meet the learning targets. That's what's on the standardized tests. So that learning all has to take place in the classroom or in the school setting. Um, there are a lot of barriers to learning. And some of those barriers are things like homonyms, synonyms, unfamiliar language. Uh, one time I used the idiom, are you pulling my leg? And I had six students look under the table. Our overall strategy is to embed the English language into the content. One of the things that Kit and I will do is pick out vocabulary words that are going to be hard and think about how we're going to teach it. Like, are there hand motions that go with it? Are there graphics we can introduce? Are there more than one way to say the same word? Because we have native English speakers have multiple ways to say words where EL students might only know one version of that word. So coming up with pre-planning what those words are and how we're going to teach it to them. So some visual strategies we use are anchor charts. We have anchor charts all around the classroom that the students help create. So the students are adding to the picture, adding to the words. Um, and they really use those when they're reading or when they're learning new skills. They look to those to help support their writing and to support their speaking. Um, other things we do is we attach movements to the words, so pictures will generate memories in their head, which movements will also do. Labels point. Labels point. Headings tell. Headings tell. Bold words emphasize. Bold words emphasize. I think manipulatives are real important at the beginning of the lesson to promote engagement and motivation for the students to learn and get that hook so they're ready to begin the lesson. We use a variety of manipulatives such as matching cards to pictures, words. We use dice to help with math games. We use actual stuffed animals to help the students reenact some of the stories that we've been teaching. For instance, if we were reading a story about a dog, that stuffed animal becomes part of the story. We make scenery to show the background of the story. We use the, the teacher's chair to be part of the story. We even use musical instruments to demonstrate important parts of the story where the sound is needed to show that somebody is walking across a bridge. We use dice a lot and we customize them to meet the for whatever learning target we're doing. So they can be question dice, they can be informational text feature dice. And it's really a way to engage the first graders. It makes it fun for them. They want to roll the dice, they want to read what's on them, and then they want to share with their partners what they're doing. Today we had an activity where students rolled their informational text feature dice, and then they had to find the text feature in their book. Once they did that, they took a picture with their iPad, and they used the app Pick Collage to put the four text features together and then they uploaded it to Seesaw. And once it was on Seesaw, their families could see it and comment on it. So the families are really involved in our classroom because they can see it immediately. Providing opportunities for students to do peer talk, teacher talk, helps them to internalize what the lesson is all about and the learning target that they were aiming for. We do a lot of turn and talk with their neighbors so that they can share ideas. We do a lot of whole class thinking and sharing so that everyone's hearing what the other kids might be thinking and that gives them also confidence to take risks and share what they're thinking. We really try to create an environment where all the students are willing to take risks and really express themselves. One thing we do a lot in reading and writing is I'll say something and then the students will say it back to me. For example, say, I learned, and then all the students will say, I learned, and we'll attach a movement to it like tapping our legs. So we'll give them part of the sentence, I learned, or I predict, I think, I noticed. And that really helps them express what they want to say and gives them more of that language that they might not have access to. I think fun is a great motivator for students. We want our students to want to be there and to learn. And a way to do that is through engagement and motivation straight at the beginning of the lesson. 
A student the other day said to me, you make learning so much fun, we don't even know we're learning. We do a lot of um, bucket fillers. So we fill a bucket, when they fill a bucket, they get a prize or a reward when the whole class does it. And it's a class thing, so the class has to work together. Another motivating thing is we have a wow work wall. So kids that feel like their work, they did a great job or that it's wow work, they get to hang their work on the wall for everyone to see and everyone has a spot and that's the, where they're really proud of at conferences. It's usually the first place they take their parents to see their wow work. They love working together, especially when they're six and seven, that's their favorite thing to do. So anytime where they're able to work together and incorporate their academics into it, I think that benefits everyone involved. Sometimes students are reading with a partner, elbow, elbow, knee, knee. Sometimes students are working on the same thing, so they choose to work together, and that's really great because when they get stuck, they can ask each other or they can explain things to each other. They can kind of bounce off ideas off of each other. They're not afraid to take risks in the classroom. Like if they make a mistake or they feel like they didn't do it right, they know that that's okay and that they'll get a chance to try again, and their classmates will really support them in that. As an EL teacher, I learned never to assume. I think it's important to realize that kids are going to get stuck and I kind of expect them to get stuck. It's how we deal with getting them unstuck that's important. One of the ways that I get them unstuck is to reteach. Again, provide pictures, realia to help them understand using student talk, student peer talk, student teacher talk. We really take the time to collaborate and go back and look at the way we taught it and see how we can teach it differently either later in the day or the next day so that the students can get it. So it's using different books, using different graphics, using different movements, really trying everything until they get it. Sometimes students are the best teachers in the classroom so we rely on them to explain or help their classmates get it because they might be able to explain it in a way that I never thought of and sometimes kids have those aha moments when listening to other students so that's a really important strategy we use. I think one of the things that really makes our students successful is that Kit and I co-teach together so we plan our lessons together, we share a scope and sequence, we know what each other is teaching our students. Working with Kit over the last four years has made me really be more um, specific in my teaching of vocabulary and being aware of what words students are going to need help with, where students are going to struggle. And she can really explain it um, in different ways to them, ways that maybe I haven't thought of. I'm very proud to be part of this school which is invested in helping the EL students succeed and our test scores have shown that we're making that work. It's not what the EL teachers are doing, it's what the school comes together to teach the EL students. We're very proud that high numbers of our students graduate from the ESL program. We call that exiting. We have a huge percentage of our students that are very successful in that area. Sometimes I don't expect them to exit in the kindergarten, first and second grade, but it's great to see them when they exit in the upper grades. We know the foundation was laid for them. These are just some of the best practice strategies that we have found to be successful when working with English language learners. I hope that you find them helpful when you're instructing your students.